Hello everyone, my name is Corey Hefner. I am the T0 Project Manager at RJG. It's my pleasure to speak in this event and to share our latest simulation applications with you. This presentation is titled Enhancing Prediction Accuracy via Sensor Technologies. RJG has been in the plastics industry for over 35 years and is headquartered in Traverse City, Michigan. We are recognized as a scientific molding pioneer in the industry. RJG operates in three continents, as shown on the map, with nearly 200 direct employees. My international colleagues are experienced, hands-on professionals as well, in different domains of the industry. The following agenda items will be utilized through the rest of this presentation. Agenda item number one, traditional sensor utilization and T0. What are the purpose of using mold sensors? One of those is to assure part quality is repeatable. As an example, a part can be processed in machine A repeatedly with good quality. At a later time, the same mold is then transferred to another machine. In order to produce the same quality parts, the exact process needs to be implemented in the other machine. As you shall agree, there are several variables in the molding process. At the end, the part process, which happens in the cavity, determines the part quality. And the part process, such as pressure and temperature, can be measured by a variety of mold sensors. Therefore, a mold with installed sensors are the most robust method to produce the part repeatedly, despite of time, machines, and environment. The cavity templates, however, can be predicted in simulation and utilized to save significant tryout efforts. Over the years, RJG has put tremendous efforts in the relevant research and have developed the tool for such purpose. If everything is done correctly, the template matching can be very accurate. However, we believe that it will take some time and years for the industry to progressively learn to reach the maturity of such applications. As we are just at the starting point of the initiative, a more practical purpose should be learning from the correlation activity and investigate the root causes of discrepancy so that it can be improved in the future. Here you are looking at the T0 framework RJG developed over the years. The flowchart exhibits the scope of the projects as we offer as a service, including the forecasted machine setup sheet and predicted template transfer as we presented earlier. In step one, in-mole rheology is the subject of this presentation today. Before a detailed introduction, we'd like to share a case study which inspired the concept and why we believe this step is crucial for the success of the simulation. Agenda item number two, case study and lessons learned. The story was about a program consisting of multiple pipe fitting molds. Please bear with the limited information disclosure for NDA reasons. There were 26 parts in this program in which the customer enlisted the help of RJG's T0. The program included engineering analysis, tooling recommendations, sensor replacement, machine requirement evaluation, as well as process validation assistance. Everything went smoothly in the design and engineering phase. However, at the tool tryout, we received the feedback that our forecasted cycle times were drastically shorter than what was required by 30 to 50%. As you can see in the handwriting, the difference between the predicted and the actual. The customer stated that if we were processing the molds based on your prediction, we would have never produced any good parts, as they were seriously distorted and shrink too much. We needed to extend the cycle time to make sure the part is strong enough for ejection, and the dimension requirement can be met after it cools down. Therefore, RJG T0, we started to investigate in this case. We picked one of the molds, started to compare the actual qualified process and our process. We received the tryout data acquired via the EDART, our process monitoring system. Although we optimized the process in simulation as mentioned, 
the forecasted process setup sheet parameters were not claimed as appropriate. The left is the original simulation result and the right is the process monitoring data. The range of both plots are the same. You can tell the cycle time, packing time, and several other predictions were not comparable. When comparing the cavity pressure, the predicted cavity pressure decayed within four seconds after the part is filled. While the actual process, the pressure existed much longer than predicted. We then entered the actual process parameters. The left was the updated simulation result, and the rest are the same as a previous slide. You may notice both cavity pressure histories still showed significant difference, which means we can't meet the part process. There are definitely other factors causing this discrepancy. In this systematic troubleshooting puzzle, there are five puzzle pieces, part design, process, machine, mold, and material. So we just matched the exact process and still see the discrepancy. Let's start with the machine. The customer is a seasoned and certified RJG trainer, and we were told that the relevant machine testing had been performed. We also reviewed the mold design and confirmed the mesh model is nearly identical. As part design stays the same, the last possibility is material. There are several variables in the material database. The viscosity mostly reflects the pressure results. And in this case, we got comparable pressure peak and or pressure loss, it seemed to be less impactful to such discrepancies. Instead, as the cycle time is significantly shorter, we believe the thermal properties are more suspicious when comparing the viscosity and others. Fortunately, we searched and found a data sheet of the exact material with its thermal properties listed. While the heat capacity is similar, we noticed the thermal conductivity in this sheet. The value in simulation is nearly 40% higher than the data sheet. We decided to modify only this property to evaluate the influence. We observed significant improvement with the updated thermal conductivity property. The cavity pressure prediction, which is on the left, is much closer to the measurement. Another checking point is the intersection of the injection pressure and cavity pressure at the end of hold. The actual process on the right, if it maintains the same or similar slope, the gate is frozen, otherwise it would be deflected. In this case, the prediction with updated thermal conductivity predicted just like actual. So why was the result improvement so drastic? Well, when the value of the thermal conductivity increases, the thermal diffusity increased, which implies a higher rate of heat transfer. Therefore, the part cools more rapidly, and the cooling time that impacts the overall cycle time is expected to be shorter. This resulted in significant misprediction during the process optimization iterations. The forecasted cycle ejection readiness or time to reach heat deflection temperature, as well as the gate seal were all under predicted. Ultimately, when the warpage is calculated, the pressure and temperature history affect the prediction. As it is calculated on the PVT properties, in this case, the mold shrink is above nominal range by 40%. To summarize, the material properties in this case, thermal conductivity, is the critical parameter that led to misprediction of the forecasted process and cavity templates. The question is, how can we avoid this from happening in the future? Are there effective solutions to verify the material properties are adequate? Agenda item number three, in mold rheology methodology. Let's reiterate the analysis procedure. In simulation, 
There are three major input categories which users can decide and adjust freely. Mesh, Material, and Process. Each group of inputs contain multiple variables, then the inputs are processed with the solvers in the middle and output the predictions. In the case study shared earlier, this was a material-induced discrepancy. As the material parameter is skewed, the prediction of the cycle time also went awry. In the simulation world, a phrase that comes to mind is garbage in equals garbage out. How about if we just reverse it? When a decent correlation study is achieved, what can we get out of it? Assuming the mesh is perfectly done, the process is quite matched with the, ex with the actual, and the material should be accurate as well. Utilizing this concept, let's build the mesh model with the same as the actual one and perform some correlation studies between simulation and the real world. In one of RJG's labs, there's a spiral mold instrumented with eight pressure and eight mold temperature sensors. This mesh model was predominantly prepared to increase the resolution for best results. The cavity itself is meshed with at least 15 layers across the thickness of three millimeters. The entire model is a full 3D mesh, including the mold base, as well as other components. The sensor nodes are placed at the same location as physically placed. Some of you may wonder, why was the spiral mold chosen? And could it be other molds? Well, the answer is yes. Different configurations would also work. However, the spiral mold exhibits a unique advantage over other cavity geometries. Spiral mold cavities maintain a constant cross sectional area, which constrains the shear rate within the specific range, although it varies at different depths. As viscosity is shear rate dependent, through the changing of the sp fill speed, the viscosity at different shear rates can be also evaluated accordingly. In this case, the shear rate is controlled within 100 to 1800 units per second, and the viscosity at the wider shear range can be evaluated at higher fill speeds, and vice versa. Meanwhile, the shape offers a long flow path and offers a space to add more sensors to observe pressure loss and others. If the cavity geometry does not provide a fixed cross section in its flow path, the shear rate at different locations and time cannot be restricted within the specific range and will not be influenced by different speeds. So what is InMole Rheology for? Let's assume that you run into a situation that in a new project, you can't find the exact material within database. Therefore, you consult vendors who suggest based on MFI or other criteria. This happens quite often. Two different materials were recommended to run in simulation as surrogate materials to handle this situation. Which one is more appropriate to use in simulation? In this technique, the surrogate material or materials, if more than one, can be analyzed with the mesh model run with moderate process parameters, which will be used in the instrumented mold and export the CSV file. Then convert the CSV to be eDART template format. The program shown on the right side of the screen is developed by RJG. eDART is RJG's process monitoring system. Meanwhile, acquiring 20 kilograms of the actual material to be processed in the lab. The predicted template via the conversion tool in the previous process is just loaded to the eDART. Once machine process is set up to be the same as the simulation inputs, the experiment is ready to start. Using the process monitoring system, you will get the pressure and temperature data as simulated. This was filmed during the actual experiment, and you can see the predicted template being displayed on the EDAR interface. 
The process parameters are slightly adjusted in order to match the simulation template as much as possible. Once it's completed, you can add notes to the particular cycle to be used in the future correlation iterations. So circle back to the material selection scenario earlier. Here's material A's results. These are cavity pressure curves as well as we focus on part process. Simulation curves are shown as dashed lines and sensor measurement are solid lines. These pressure curves are aligned quite well with each other. Here is material B's result. Comparing material A, material B is simulations shown as significantly higher pressure loss between the measurement points. This indicates the viscosity is higher than actual material. This is a side-by-side -side comparison during the filling phase that helps recap the last two slides. This is a side-by-side -side comparison during pack and hold that helps evaluate the thermal conductivity during the pack and hold phase of the molding cycle. After seeing the results, the choice is quite clear. Material A is significantly better choice. We believe this method can be introduced to the industry to benefit the simulation community and stakeholders. The solution not only helps to evaluate the material properties, it can also be used to adjust the material parameters based on measurement data. Therefore, a more accurate prediction can be achieved. Due to time limitations, we may introduce more relevant techniques at a later time. Why material parameters are so important? As there are many variables involved in injection molding, these parameters influence all the way to scheduling, production, quality, and ultimately the success of the business. Viscosity affects the tonnage requirement, machine selection, and design parameters. PVT affects the design, dimension, shrinkage prediction, etc. And the thermal properties dictate the cycle time, process window, and so forth. These are essential pieces of information that we suggest to take care of when using simulation for critical decision making. Meanwhile, there are leverages of utilizing sensors for research and development and material development, as we have received growing interest over the recent years. Building a mold with sensors helps to understand the molding challenges in your applications, such as cosmetics, weld lines, mechanical strength properties. It can also be used for material development, such as batch-to-batch, -batch, fillers and additives, or post-consumer regrinds. Agenda item number four, conclusion. Fidelity of material parameters plays a critical role of predicting final part performance in manufacturability. Combining the strength of Moldex 3D and simulation technologies, challenges like surrogate material selection can be achieved effectively and economically. RJG's T0 offers both service and turnkey solutions of advanced sensor applications to benefit the simulation community. Please contact RJG T0 at t0core at rjginc.com. This concludes my presentation today, and I appreciate everyone's attentiveness. Thank you for your time.